Hello friends, welcome to the Breaking News 247 channel, in this video I would like to send you the following content, if there were ever a time to join us, it is now. Every contribution, however big or small, powers our journalism and sustains our future. 5 Observations Following Ipswich Town 6-0 Win Against Doncaster Ipswich Town thrashed Doncaster Rovers 6-0 at Portman Road last night. Stuart Watson gives his thoughts. Enjoy it. Really enjoy it. Because we've all waited a long time for a moment like this to come along. This was the first time Ipswich had scored six goals in a game since Connor Wickham's hat trick at Doncaster more than a decade ago, February 2011. Lee Evans became the first Ipswich player to score a hat trick since Grant Ward's debut treble on the opening day of 2016-17. It was, of course, Town's first home win of the season at the eighth attempt. Remarkably, it was the Blues' first victory in front of an unrestricted Portman Road crowd since February 2020, Burton 4-1. Hometown hero Macaulay Bond bagged another two to take his embryonic tally to seven. Bruce and Selena, another player fans have got a real emotional connection to, got a couple of assists. Town scored from two set pieces. It was another clean sheet. No wonder there were such jubilant scenes at the end. This was a result born out of a perfect storm. Doncaster were a downtrodden, tired-looking side. In the space of four days they traveled down to Plymouth, lost to a stoppage time penalty, returned to South Yorkshire and then almost immediately headed straight down to Suffolk. From the very start, the league's bottom play side appeared a little punch drunk. And they just so happened to be up against a power-packed Blues team that is finally beginning to find its feet. As Paul Cook said, they walked into us heavy. Doncaster were all over the place in the first half, Wes Burns intercepted a slack pass and swept in a low cross from Macaulay Bond to tap in a 13th-minute opener. The pair combined again to almost produce a carbon copy goal not long afterwards. When Evans sat foot at home a second following a poorly defended Scott Fraser corner in the 32nd minute, a very noticeable chasm and confidence levels began to show. The rest of a very one-sided first half was played out like an attack v defense training session. Town had found some swagger. Richie Wellens made a double sub at the break. He switched to a 3-4-3 system. After a pretty nothing opening 15 minutes to the second half, the visitors, to their credit, actually started to get a bit of a foothold in the game. For a 10-minute spell, the Blues actually started to wobble just a little bit. It was, perhaps, a sign of some deep-rooted anxieties created by previous drop points. A goal against would have completely changed the mood in the ground. Instead, with their newfound solidity, Town stood firm. And, thanks to some increasing chemistry fitness, they were able to suddenly move up a gear to ruthlessly finish things off with four goals in the space of ten Moroccan Durham's minutes. Evans expertly heading in Selena's cross on 70 minutes was, for me, the defining moment of this match. And it shouldn't go unnoticed that it was Evans who won a powerful defensive header in the build-up too. Never has a player probably felt so happy to pass on the captain's armband. Evans was able to go and get his goals, the match ball secured with a fine side-footed finish high into the net, thanks to having his former Wigan teammate Sam Morsi alongside him. The shackles were released. Morsi led both vocally and by example. Out of possession, he sniffed danger and snapped at heels. In possession, he never stopped demanding the ball and always looked to drive into space when possible. The team looked so much more functional with him at the heart of it. Little more than a fortnight earlier, Town had lost 5-2 at home to Bolton. So what's changed from then to get a scoreline like this? No frills right back Genoido Nation has, undoubtedly, made the Blues better defensively since replacing the more adventurous Kane Vincent Young. Central defensive duo George Edmondson and Cameron Burgess are beginning to form an understanding. Edmondson, who stabbed home the sixth at a set piece, looks a very good signing. Goalkeeper Vaclav Hladki, far less exposed, has himself become a lot more assured in all he does. 
There's been a far better balance in central midfield since Rakeem Harper has dropped out the side. He, to be fair, has been an effective sub in a more advanced role. The 21-year-old almost made it 7 when hitting the post late on. And Town were always going to be dangerous once they got that solid base sorted because, quite clearly, there are goals galore in this squad. There's Westburn's pace on one side and Scott Fraser's clever movement and classy touch on the other. In between them, Selena, who provided two second-half assists with crosses from the left, is only going to get stronger. We know he's got the ability to light up this league. Already, just how fit, he's showing signs of that. And up top, of course, is Bond. He's simply on fire. His second goal of the game was sublime. A chest, spin and left-footed volley into the bottom corner followed by a knee slot and kiss of the badge. Beautiful. Just like with Daryl Murphy in 2014-15, it feels like he's going to score every game. And with players like Kyle Edwards, currently injured, James Norwood, Joe Pickett, Connor Chaplin, Sonaluko and Harper all in reserve, no one will be able to let their standards slip. Whisper it quietly, but this is a squad that looks like it might just have a long winning streak in them at some stage. Thank you for watching our videos, subscribe to our channel to get notifications when we post newest videos. Thank you and goodbye!